Hi, I'm Shelby Williams with Plano City Council. Tonight, the big item on the agenda was the redevelopment of Willow Bend Mall. But to get to that, you're gonna have to wait through the other stuff, but I promise it'll be relatively quick. Uh, so first, we appointed the Ricks, Rick Smith and Rick Horn, as liaisons to the new uh, Tax Increment uh, Financing Reinvestment Zone 5. Uh, <clears throat> I've already spoken a lot about TIFs, Tax Increment Financing, tax inc TERS, Tax Increment Reinvestment Zones. Uh, so look at my other videos for a primer on that. Uh, so we did have an update on the stream bank uh, study. So more than a year ago, we said we wanted to study the erosion of stream banks across the city. So there are several streams in the city and they have walls that uh, are subject to erosion. In some of these, uh, they are the erosion is creeping dangerously close to actual structures, homes, buildings, etc. We found, or we studied, approximately 30 miles in just the first year of this study. Interestingly, we can only evaluate the stream banks in the winter because that's when the snakes go away into hibernation. Um, but we have evaluated 30, approximately 30 miles worth of stream banks in the city during the first year. 66% uh, of the stream banks are city-owned and managed, 25% owner-managed, and about 9% HOA. That's so far. Um, the, they're all scored based on how, uh, how, in what good repair they are, how poor repair. So an average score of 67.5, you'd think that's relatively high, actually means it's going to fail within three to five years. <clears throat> so <clears throat> where this is a problem is in our streams, for neighborhoods that were largely built in the 80s and 90s that fall to owner or HOA responsibility when I suspect, I don't know this because I actually wasn't involved in those deals, but I suspect in the cases where the owner or HOA bears responsibility for maintaining the stream bank, I suspect when those agreements were made, it was discussed in terms of uh, taking care of dead trees, brush, etc., cetera, um, maintaining. But when a stream bank is subject to erosion over decades and creeps ever closer to habitable structures, then that represents a real safety hazard. Not just people falling down, but actual structures collapsing. That's a much bigger deal. Um, especially if they fall on top of the people who just fell down in the stream bank, then you know they get squashed. But Back in the 80s and 90s, when a lot of these subdivisions were built, um, you know, they knew that stream banks were subject to change over time, but I don't know that they were really prepared or thought about the vast amount of concrete that has been added um, to the, the entire count, Cullen County since then, and not just Cullen County, but we're in uh, also Denton County a little bit, just a sliver, but still, <clears throat> all of the concrete... <clears throat> where water doesn't just seep into the ground, it runs off, um, creating vastly more water flow in some streams than existed 20, 30, 40 years ago, which has a much greater impact on the erosion. So it's projected that this uh, evaluation, this study of all the stream banks in the city is gonna last another year plus. Um, so I requested that we have a policy discussion about this much sooner. So that's going to be coming up uh, this spring in advance of the budget uh, discussions. <clears throat> so moving on to the regular meeting. Uh, the Salvation Army Mayor's Red Kettle Challenge. Now, <clears throat> I am very proud that I began this tradition in 2020 of the City Council ringing the bell for the Salvation Army. <clears throat> and I've got no issue with it being called the Mayor's Red Kettle Challenge because let's issue the call and let's challenge the other cities. Let's raise more money. So the Plano City Council, we took turns ringing the bell for the Salvation Army. Uh, we raised $3,467.33. And uh, the first place winner amongst the Plano City Council was Rick Smith, who raised $943. So congratulations, Rick. Um, and this is now a tradition that we're keeping going every single year. Um, and again, I'm very proud of that. Uh, we proclaimed February to be Black History Month in Plano. Uh, an item was pulled off the consent agenda. Uh, there were a couple more, but this is the one I want to speak to. It's an economic development incentive <clears throat> for $2.4 million 
uh, for Cisgration, a, um, a, a company that is going to obviously benefit from the grant. Um, the reality is we anticipate reaping twice that amount in uh, revenue to the city. <clears throat> now in Texas's property tax system, of which I have spoken at length against, but as long as we have it, <clears throat> then the idea of economic development grants, which are authorized by the state, by the state law, uh, the idea of those economic development grants, it's not just a nebulous idea that a rising tide lifts all boats, and if we throw a bunch of money at a given company, then it will benefit the area. <clears throat> we get an actual return in property tax dollars, um, as well as other things. So uh, this company, Cisgration, <clears throat> in order to receive it, is going to provide um, about 150 jobs, if I recall the number, <clears throat> um, within the city of Plano, the, the the sales tax that might be reaped from those jobs is negligible compared to the property tax revenue. They're going to be required to occupy 98,000 square feet of space. Now, the way lease properties are valued, the same as apartments, is based on, because they're rentals, not ownership, for ownership, like single-family homes, the county appraisal district tries to figure out every year what the market value of your home is <clears throat> from which they derive your taxable value. But for apartments and for lease properties, they don't have to try to figure out what it's worth. The rents show them what they're worth on a market basis because that's what the market is willing to pay for. So if you've got <clears throat> 98,000 square feet of space that nobody's renting, then it's worth approximately zero. <clears throat> and so we collect, so if it's valued at zero dollars, we collect a percentage of zero dollars, which is also zero dollars. So by occupying, by being required to occupy 98,000 square feet of uh, space, that is going to increase the taxable value of that, and so we will reap the property tax value. In addition to that, <clears throat> the, um, they are required under the terms of the grant to invest $16 million in improved space. So that's 16 million additional dollars of taxable value from which we reap the property tax benefit. So all of this to say that economic development grants can be measured in a hard dollar return to the city. It's not just this vague nebulous idea that it'll just benefit the area and there you know so we'll we'll get some sort of benefit who knows how much we can actually tie it to a dollar figure. <clears throat> so uh, moving on to the big item of the day, the redevelopment of Willow Bend Mall. <clears throat> so Willow Bend Mall in East Plano came online, uh, unfortunately, shortly before 9-11 and never recovered. <clears throat> um, it just never got its footing. Part of this was because the evolution of uh, retail and online commerce during the time, it was like one of the last malls built under the, the traditional mall concept, and it was just too late to the game. <clears throat> it, wasn't, um, it wasn't prepared to face the evolution of retail and the economy at the time. So uh, Centennial purchased this property after several false starts of companies that tried to reboot it. <clears throat> they are going to demolish 530,000 square feet of existing mall, leaving 400,000 square feet of mall as it is today. Um, they're proposing to create a seven-story mixed-use building and 965 units max uh, multifamily, <clears throat> 957 mid-rise and or independent living uh, of up to five stories and up to 40 multifamily, uh, just traditional multifamily, not necessarily mid-rise or independent living of three to four stories. <clears throat> Um, the existing um, um, uh, zoning allows a building of up to 20 stories. <clears throat> so there, the, the proposal tonight was to build up to 20 stories uh, within 725 feet of Dallas Parkway, the tollway, um, and up to five stories everywhere else outside of that 725 foot marker. Uh, they're going to have 10 acres of open space, seven of which, seven acres of which will be publicly available. Now, this does not conform completely to the comprehensive plan. It does not meet the mix of uses. And the, uh, the density requirement in the comprehensive plan says 
that uh, it should have 10 to 50 dwelling units per acre. This development would have 95.4 dwelling units per acre. So there are a few things to consider here. <clears throat> One is adherence to the comp plan, the comprehensive plan. We fought hard for that. We fought very hard for it, and it went through an arduous process with the Comprehensive Plan Review Committee uh, before we got to an agreement that the people of Plano, after years of contentious uh, and legal battles, <clears throat> felt was good for the future of the city, <clears throat> and every, every, everybody accepted it. We have, I feel, as does uh, Councilman Anthony Riccadelli, who said this on the dais, become a little too comfortable with passing developments and redevelopments that do not conform to the comprehensive plan. Um, <clears throat> this is counterbalanced against the fact that uh, I've spent you know, ver most of my career in retail, omni-channel, digital commerce, et cetera, in uh, marketing operations and sales. And I genuinely want to see this property redeveloped. I want it to be successful and I want it to help bolster the entire area and the tollway corridor. <clears throat> um, until you get to Legacy West, Shops at Legacy, and Stonebriar, that whole area up there around the tollway in 121, <clears throat> um, it's, uh, it's starting to fail. And Willow Bend is part of that equation. The more Willow Bend falls into disuse and tenantless space, the way Collin Creek did, what we saw with Collin Creek is it dragged down an entire area, not just the mall itself, in which those businesses do depend on other businesses thriving. A single business, let's say Dillard's, by itself, or, or Neiman Marcus, by itself. If that were the only thing to survive, Willow Bend, they'd have no interest in being there. So they would go too. Um, so all of those businesses depend on an ecosystem uh, to survive. And there are still a lot of businesses at Willow Bend. There are a lot of shuttered shops. <clears throat> um, I walked through there recently. But there are still a lot of businesses. Those individual businesses need the mall to survive to continue their business. But the entire area around Willow Bend Mall <clears throat> um, depends on Willow Bend Mall to um, if not survive, definitely to thrive. This is what we saw with Cullen Creek. As the mall died, a broad area around the mall just got depressed. <clears throat> Many businesses didn't survive because of that. <clears throat> so I do want to see this revitalized. I want to see it as a southern anchor in Plano of the, uh, the Dallas Parkway corridor. And I want to see it in turn help bolster the commercial presence, I should say the uh, corporate presence in our corporate park, our legacy corporate parks. <clears throat> the office space we have there was built at a time uh, when that type of space was in demand. It's just not in that much demand anymore. We're having to get creative in how we renovate and revitalize commercial space, lease space <clears throat> for office. And one of the things that you know, businesses want is nearby dining, shopping, etc. cetera, um, <clears throat> particularly these days. So it's, long story short, revitalizing this is a very important part of the equation. Now to the multifamily aspect. Oh, I should also say that <clears throat> the more businesses decay and die, the, the lower this property sinks in value, the harder it's going to be to revive. <clears throat> Pardon me. It's particularly bad today, um, but we persevere. Um, anyway, the, the more this, the, the mall becomes depressed, the harder it's gonna be to revive. So there is a time factor here. But now we come to the multifamily. You know, 965 units um, max, but that's, <clears throat> that's a more than two and a half percent increase of all the multifamily we already have in the city. And between multifamily and single family rentals, <clears throat> with all the projects that have already been approved <clears throat> but have yet to come online, projects like uh, Beacon Square, Assembly Park, Collin Creek, Haggard Farms, <clears throat> they 
we're going to be we're going to be about at 50% rentals in the city. That is a massive number. 50% rental of all of our housing stock. <clears throat> now, I think we already have too many apartments, but we also already have too many large single family detached homes. What we are really lacking is smaller and I've harped on this for years, smaller footprint ownership options. We are catering to two life stages and needs when there are more. <clears throat> so there are people have needs beyond just either apartments or large single family homes. So <clears throat> Councilman Riccadelli, I, I brought up all of this that I've mentioned. <clears throat> Councilman Riccadelli brought up rightly that during the con comprehensive plan uh, review and creation process, Willow Ben Mall was explicitly discussed, it took up a whole page in the executive summary because it's a good case study. We knew when we developed the comprehensive plan a couple of years ago that it would require um, redevelopment and soon. Uh, it's not like it just started to fail last year. <clears throat> so uh, considerable thought was given to what would be appropriate there. If just 100 and, if I remember right, 141 multifamily units were removed from the project, it was like 864, it would allow up to 864 multifamily. <clears throat> if they had just proposed 864 multifamily instead of 965, it would have conformed to the comprehensive plan and Councilman Riccadelli and myself could have supported it. As it is, we voted no. Um, spoiler alert, it passed, but uh, we voted no. Um, speaking only for myself, not uh, speaking for Councilman Riccadelli, um, my vote, you know, we, we went around the dais as we do in these large cases, and we all shared our thoughts. <clears throat> and I was pretty sure it was going to pass. Councilman, Councilman Riccadelli actually spoke last, and I'll be honest, I didn't know how I was going to vote until very shortly before we actually took the final vote. Because of those competing concerns, adherence to the comprehensive plan, uh, <clears throat> which we poured a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into, versus the need to do something meaningful with this property before it drags down the entire area. And again, time is of the essence. So knowing pretty much the way the vote was going to go, um, <clears throat> I, I essentially lodged a protest vote. Um, for, again, speaking only for myself, I wanted to send a signal to developers that it, it wasn't necessarily going to be a slam dunk if you propose something that does not conform to the comprehensive plan. I also voted no uh, for the EDS redevelopment because um, the developer would not dedicate the multifamily there to the employees of the life sciences campus. <clears throat> I told them straight up, I would have approved twice as many apartments there if they had dedicated it to the employees. Um, but they didn't, so I didn't. Uh, with this mall, uh, the redevelopment of Willow Bend Mall, if, if the vote would have failed, if the rezoning would have failed, <clears throat> if I'm being totally honest and transparent, um, and if I thought it would considerably delay or outright endanger the project if the rezoning failed, I might have voted in favor. I was truly torn before the vote was taken, but kind of having a sense for how it was going to go and legitimately being persuaded by Councilman Riccadelli's uh, analysis and what he said, uh, I voted no as well. That does not mean I'm not glad it's going to be redeveloped. I am. I genuinely am. It just means that I wish it weren't going to be redeveloped with that much multifamily. Uh, but this is um, a growing concern in Plano because for the most part, people want to build multifamily. Developers want to build multifamily. And I get it. I understand why they want to. If you build a rental, it's a continuing income stream. And even if you're not going to own it, you're selling a continuing income stream instead of just a one-time sale. All of that means that multifamily is more profitable. Um, our responsibility as Plano City Council members is not to developers' profitability uh, or anybody's profitability, really. It's to 
the people of Plano. Um, and so as our population increases, as our housing dichotomy worsens, the apartments and the large single family detached homes, <clears throat> we're going to have additional issues that need to be um, managed. We can't go bulldoze anybody's homes or apartment complexes. <clears throat> what we can do is very thoughtfully and deliberately approach revitalization projects, areas that need to be redeveloped, and not go gung-ho for all the multifamily they want just because something has to be done with that property. Yes, something does have to be done with all of these redevelopments. Something does have to be done, but something doesn't mean just anything. Um, I think we should very deliberately think this through and make sure that we are appropriately, for decades, <clears throat> look taking a decades-long view of this, working to diversify our housing stock so that we are not overly dense. We're already neck and neck as the highest density city in all of Texas with a population of a quarter million or more. That is not something I want to be number one for. Um, I like being number one for lots of other stuff, not that. Um, but I think we need to very deliberately and carefully plan out our housing mix so that we're not creating artificial scarcity by not having the types of housing people need to live in, which drives up prices um, uh, artificially as well. <clears throat> but that we're also ensuring that we have a consistently vibrant city as the decades march on. Anything we build today will ultimately fall into dereliction if we uh, don't revitalize it. That goes for the entire city, all 72 square miles. So I think that is super duper important. And I'd like to see us as a council and us as a city take a more thoughtful and proactive view to that. Um, that was it for uh, the business of tonight's meeting. I do want to mention that uh, we have a primary election coming up. Early voting starts next Tuesday, February 20th. Election day is Tuesday, March 5th. <clears throat> I am actually on the ballot. Uh, in addition to serving you on Plano City Council, I am running for chair of the Collin County Republican Party. Uh, yes, I can do both simultaneously, and you can read all about what I intend to do on my blog, um, including my first 315-day plan. Yes, that's an odd number, but read the article and you'll find out why. So I am Shelby Williams with Plano City Council. Thank you for hanging in there as long as you have, and God bless.